Today, I'm gonna build a functional LEGO space station, and then I'm gonna put it to the test in a series of challenges to see if it can actually survive the dangers of space. And since we have this big open space, the sky really is the limit for this one, so we're gonna make it huge. The plan is to build a space station with three connecting modules that each serve a different purpose, starting with the center module, which is going to house our living quarters and our generator. And since I want this thing to be massive, we're gonna make the center module about this large. And then what I'm gonna do is go around the corners and add some wedge plates so we can get more of an octagon shape. Then to finish off the base for this, I'm gonna add some Technic bricks to sturdify it and make it strong, and then add a layer of tiles on top of that so we can angle the wall. All right, and after 15 minutes of locking together our base, we now have a really, really strong foundation. Since this is gonna be the main module, and this is the part that's going to be suspended, there's gonna be a lot of torque on the rest of this, so we needed to make it as strong as possible. And we're not quite done yet, but once we fix that part, <laughs> Now that we've got the base finished up, we need to build the walls. We're gonna have to use jumper plates. That'll actually allow us to perfectly snap down a brick that goes across like that. So I'm just gonna build up a few layers of bricks and then we'll add some windows and doorways for those long passages. By just taking a few of these little pieces, which let you build on the side, we should be able to lock that in sideways. We just have to fill in the gaps around it, but that'll go kind of all the way around. You can see here I've included some little Technic pieces built into the base so that we can create a frame that kind of comes up and goes across out of Technic, which is gonna be a lot stronger and allow us to connect the side tubes. Now if we just connect these two sides, we should be pretty strong. It is really strong, that's awesome. Oh, I haven't locked the walls in together. Here we have the finished walls for module one with some tiny little details around the edges just to make it look extra cool. Now that we got that all built up, we can start working on the electromagnetic generator. It's gonna go on the inside and power some of the lights on the ship. Originally I had this whole thing built up to build a gyroscope, but uh, that didn't work. This is not going to balance vertically, is it? Well, I had this dope idea for a gyroscope that I thought would make this actually balance, but then I did a little more research and that's not how they use gyroscopes in space. So instead of our gyroscope in here, we're going to build an electromagnetic generator. And this is a little bit tricky. We're gonna take a Lego Power Functions motor and instead of plugging it into a battery box, we're gonna plug it into these Power Functions lights, like this. And here's the cool thing. If we actually spin our motor fast enough, we can generate electricity in the lights. Now, we could just plug this into a battery box, but instead of that, to make this thing look like a working generator, we're gonna plug another motor into the battery box and then plug these two motors together with a gear ratio. This is really weird, but watch this. Now, when we spin this, as you can see, we have a generator that's generating electricity. And just for fun, we'll hide this guy in here and add some little glass pieces to make it look like a nuclear reactor. As you can see, I just finished the generator. It looks pretty good. And we have this little button in the back. We just click that. It turns on and actually produces power or I guess in this case, reproduces power, but whatever, it's still cool. Next, I wanna add some living quarters back in this little corner area with some beds, some nightstands, and a little partition wall. So check it out, guys. I just finished the interior of the center module. We got the living quarters on this side with some cool little beds. And then over here, I built a little rec room with a pool table and some weights. I also built a couple futuristic treadmills right over there, so that's kind of cool. And a machine that prints your food. I also just added a couple of these opening and closing doors that are powered by a little gear rack on top. You just spin this gear and the door opens and closes. When we test the space station later with the challenges, I'm gonna actually put little mini cameras on the inside of this module so we can see if they'll survive. Next up on this, I wanna add two giant spinning rings that go on either side. I think that'll really add a lot of mass to this thing and those will be motorized too, so it'll look pretty cool. So to get the shape for our giant spinning rings, I was thinking, we just use railroad tracks. Lego makes these already with a set angle, and if we connect enough of them together, we can get a full circle that's pretty big. We might just be able to go straight across from both of these to some sort of central axle so we can motorize it. There we go. We got the shape built up, and I wanna keep this thing pretty lightweight. So we're just gonna put a little Technic box piece in the middle, and then add some designs to the rest of it to make it look better. <laughs> then we can just build one more of these and attach them to some motors on the side of the central module. So you guys, it's all about these little greebly bits and details that really make a build come to life. Just adding little like printed tiles and different colors, sometimes putting random pieces around to just kind of spice it up, you know? The idea for this is to connect them with motors right into the sides right there so that they'll actually be able to spin. The problem is I wasn't really thinking ahead and built windows around them. So I need to remove a couple of the windows and then build a little mount around these Technic pieces so we can attach our motor. I gotta keep going. If we put this on here, see if it works. Hey, there we go. There we go. So as you can see here on the back side, I just have a little worm gear set up with our motor connected to the side of it. And that also gives us a nice little gear reduction. The last thing I want to add to the center module is a little docking bay. So we just kind of pop out this guy on the end. We can build a sort of circular door that locks. Here you can see my little hatch door. That thing opens just like that. But we have our hatch right here and it works pretty well. 
So here we have our main module here. We're gonna end up hanging our whole space station from steel cables, but for now we got this table. And once we have the entire thing assembled, then we'll lower the table down and see if it actually hangs. And I just built a simple roof out of plates that can just snap on right on the top like that. The next thing we gotta design are the tunnels that are gonna connect each module together. And to make it look nice, I think I'm gonna use a bunch of these panels. And then to lock these panels together, we can just connect three of these pins to a little lift arm, and we should be able to slide that right in there into those three pinholes, just like that. Now, we just have to connect the rest of them like that. <laughs> this piece held together really well. We're just gonna build one more of these, and we can pop them in later once we have everything built up. So to attach our tunnels here, all we gotta do is just snap in our pins, and then these little braces come down to keep it sturdy. And then I also added some steel cables that are just locked in using a few tiny little Technic pins. And since these kind of have a triangle shape as well, that'll give us even better cross stability. And we can hook it onto those bars that we built in like that. We'll do the same thing on the other module too. You guys, super exciting announcement. We've just launched a brand new Ooglot. This is Astroblot, our space themed Ooglot. As you can see, he comes with a cool little space drill, a rocket emblem on his chest, and a little pressure gauge. This is actually our biggest Ooglot so far. He comes with all the pieces you need and a cool little instructional video where I show you how to put them together. So if you want to get one of these for yourself to put together, you can go to ooglot.com or click the link in the description. Now let's build the next part. Now that we've got the center module complete, we can move on to building module two, which is going to house our air jet propulsion system and our solar array. First, we just gotta build this up like the other one. Since the plan is to hang our giant space station on a single wire, I wanna make it so we can actually steer with the remote control. So we can actually turn it around using a system of air jets. And the way we're gonna do that is with this, a can of dust off. The cool thing about this is it blows, as you see. But the even cooler thing is if you turn it upside down, it'll actually blow some of the stuff in the can out and it looks just like the air jets on spaceships. And then using Lego pneumatic tubes, we can actually route our air jets anywhere we want on the ship. By the way, don't do this, because if you spray this upside down, it'll actually shoot out freezing liquid and you can get a chemical burn. I actually did that to my sister's leg once, I didn't know, so I was just like, look at this can of dust off. <laughs> it like left a little welt. So I'm just gonna build a little base to go under the ship and actually hold these guys down so they don't move. So if we build something like this with a simple little gear ratio on the front, we can activate both sides of the spray. The problem is it just doesn't have enough strength to actually activate. If we drill a little hole in this guy, we can attach a string, and by pulling this guy down, we should be able to activate it a lot easier. Yeah. Now we just gotta attach our wire on that, and it should wrap around. One should make that go. And it does. And the other one should make that go. Whoa, and it does. <laughs> okay, I finally did it. Uh, don't do this at home. I kind of went a more technic route, but essentially the idea is there's this worm gear right here, which turns this axle. I just have this wire wrapped around clockwise, and this one counterclockwise. As you can see, one tightens while the other one loosens, so we can go to the left side. I don't think it's supposed to drip out like that. And then if we go the other way, you can see that one loosens and that one tightens. And now it's empty. We'll put one of these inside each of the ends of these, and then we can connect our pneumatic tube. And then once we build one more of these guys, we'll install both of them in the bottom of the ship, and we'll route the end of these tubes to certain positions so that we can steer it. I'm really hoping that works. Again, this is dangerous. Don't do it. But I did, so <laughs> y'all can watch me get injured. The next thing I want to add to this are some solar arrays coming out on each side of our module. And for that, I'm gonna use these. These are Lego solar panels that are actually supposed to connect to one of these power cells and charge it. And then once this guy's fully charged up, you should be able to discharge the energy into a motor or something. And then I wanna run the power that that'll actually generate into some solar shields to protect the solar panels from like asteroids. I went online and bought some extra solar panels for show. So I'm just going to build a duplicate one of these that looks like this so we can kind of extend our solar panel out. But this one will be the one that's actually generating the power. The nice thing is we already have some Technic connections on the sides, so we just need to come up with some sort of hinging mechanism that'll take a plate like this and fold it up to kind of protect the solar panels. And here we have our solar shields. Just a few little gears in there connected to the servo motor and those things fold right over. I just gotta build up a few more of these because we're gonna put them on both of the side modules, but the ones on module three are just gonna be for show. 
I'm also gonna go ahead and build a little power station inside of module two with this guy so we can see how much power the solar panels will actually generate. I have no idea if this will even work with these Lego solar panels, but if it does, we'll be able to connect the solar shields into this and see if they can activate. If not, bye bye space station solar panels. The last thing I wanna do on this module is just add a science laboratory on this side. I'm gonna block it off with some of these nice opaque glass walls and then build up some tables with some science equipment on top of them. <laughs> this thing looks so dope. It's perfect. There we have our solar module with our rotating solar panels and our solar shields. So now that we got that complete, we can move on to building module three, which is gonna contain the space station's laser defense system. And this one's gonna be pretty dangerous. And the main thing that I wanna put inside this is a powerful one watt laser. And this thing is actually extremely dangerous. So, high protection. This thing is capable of focusing light at such an intensity that we can actually light matches just using the beam. Look at that. So we're gonna take this and put it on the inside of our space station with a little rotating mirror so we can actually aim it side to side. To angle our mirror slow enough so it actually works, I'm gonna use a single motor like this, put a little gear ratio on the end so it further slows it. We're gonna then take this worm gear assembly and snap it on here. So now we have two gear ratios and this thing, as you can see, is spinning really slow, which should give us enough precision to angle the laser. And to make sure we're reflecting the entirety of the laser beam and not losing practically any light intensity, I'm gonna use one of these precision mirrors that's actually made for C CO2 lasers. This thing reflects over 99% of visible light. Let's see what we got. If we shine this at our mirror, it moves our beam, as you can see. So we just gotta come up with a strong mount for this that'll sit inside here and then blast out one of these walls so it has room to go side to side. This thing is getting huge. The more pieces I attach to this, the more nervous I get that as soon as we lower the table down, it's just gonna snap. This is it. Now that we have them all attached, this is the final moment of truth to see if it'll actually hang or not. Here we go. Lowered slowly. It's lifting. We're going up. And <laughs> we did it. Introducing the USS Brick Science 4000 Space Station. This thing weighs a whopping 34 pounds and took just over 25 hours to build. You can see I also added plenty of details to the interior to make it look as realistic as I could because we're about to test out all its features in three main challenges to see how it does against the dangers of space. I'm gonna start up our generator for the lights. So I just gotta flick on this little battery box in here. And there we go, we got lights. <laughs> Starting with challenge number one, the black hole test. So for that, we're gonna need to use the air jets to reposition this thing. If this works, we should see compressed air coming out of these little nozzles. Here we go, let's try this side. It's turning, look at that. Look, I can feel it from here. Let's try going the other way. It's working, it's running. It's actually coming out of this little hole right here. Let's see what works on this side. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> we burst a valve, oh no. <laughs> okay, so it's not working as great as I thought it would, but it is still working. I wish it was a little more visible. You can kind of see it like spurting out. Okay, honestly, I thought it'd be a lot more powerful. <laughs> I think one of the canisters like may have exploded on this side. So that system is out. Now we're just floating in space helplessly. So without air jets, there is no way it's going to be able to reposition after a solar storm. Oh, wow. We lost a piece of the roof. <laughs> Without air jets, there's no way this thing is able to reposition itself in space to keep from going completely all over the place. So for the first test, I would say this thing fails. Which brings us to our next test. We're gonna test out our laser defense system. First up, we gotta open the blast shield so the laser can actually shine through. This is it, moment of truth. Does the laser actually work? As you can see, we can angle our mirror side to side, pop our laser on just like this and we can angle our mirror side to side until it goes over to the balloon, and that's it. Boom, look at that, dude. Okay, defense system definitely works. The thing about a laser this powerful is it actually has to have a black surface to be able to conduct heat. So for the scale of a laser this size on a space station this large, this would probably work for defense, but only if you're an alien invader with a black UFO. <laughs> For the final test, we're gonna simulate our space station flying through an asteroid field. So we wanna engage our solar shield so we can actually protect the solar panels, which is providing power to the ship. Unfortunately, we're indoors. So I'm gonna actually take one of these off, put it outside and charge it for a bit, see if we can get it to work. On the bright side, it's a very sunny day. 
All right, we successfully charged up our power cell. As you can see, it has 52 joules. So now we can plug it back in. Oh, and they all just disappeared. How convenient. You just saw that, right? You saw it on the screen? Lego, you need to do better at this, honestly. Well, if we take that same 52 joules of energy and hook it up to this battery box, as you can see, the solar shields do actually work. But because this wasn't able to convert solar energy into power for the shields, we can't really put our solar shields down. So initiate the test. We're just gonna drop a bucket full of ice and rocks to simulate flying through an asteroid field. Uh oh. Oh man, <laughs> the ship is blown up, completely exploded. <laughs> There's no way it passes the asteroid field test. There's station fragments all over and stuff inside the rec room. You can see it did a number on our solar panels too. These things are bent to crap. If we had those shields, it would've worked a lot better. Guys, that was super cool. This video took a ton of work, so consider subscribing. I think I'm gonna rebuild this and hang it from the ceiling in the studio somewhere, but check out one of these two videos popping up on your screen. I'll talk to you in the next Berg Science. See ya.